Good. Good, 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 good. Right, we're on track now. So I'm going to say hello to anybody else that's joined right now. And I, if I just don't know how come I'm not getting anything coming up, but we'll just leave it for the minute. And I'm up. Oh, no, it's just my comments that are coming up here. All right. Anyway, just hello, everyone that has joined me. I just, I'm sorry, I can't see if you have. Um, I'm Sharon Lovegrove, and I'm an evolutionary midwife and mental fitness coach. And I work with women suffering with imposter syndrome who self-sabotage, procrastinate, and sophisticatedly hide because they're worried, they're afraid, they'll be found out they're abroad. So very often their persona is the superwoman who is trying to do everything themselves and often are very good at it. Um, but they also can micromanage, you know, overgive, don't say no worry what others think, have a pressure to be perfect, and can often end up stressed, overwhelmed, and depleted. And I help them to develop mental fitness to confidently take back control, tame their fierce inner critic, and create a new future that is healthier, wealthier, happier, and fun. So today, uh, we're going to do how, how to evolve while remaining in harmony with our mind, body, and soul. And as I said earlier on, I have to confess, I haven't done much on today's talk because I've been out all day. But I do really have a keen idea of what I believe evolving to be. And I'd really love you to put your ideas in the comments. And I hope that I can see them when they come up because it's so unusual for me not to see them. But I'd love you to put them there and I'll, I'll answer them afterwards. or you can come into the Zoom and um, I, I can chat with you there. So yeah, so to talk a little bit of maybe about what I think evolution is, you may disagree, yeah? And that's perfectly okay, but I'm gonna give you what I think evolution is about and I certainly wanna hear your thoughts. Okay, so for me, evolution is the path of love. It's the path of love, pure and simple. And I think the clue of what evolution is, is in the word itself. And you know that I love working with words. I love looking at words. That's my little passion. And evolution is made up of love and VE. So VE is for how we write energy. We write energy VE with a, a, an electron for just an E for an electron and VE for a positive charge right so it means energy on some level and for me it's love it's the path of doing love doing love is the word all right the doing of the love is how the path of evolution happens when we choose not to do the path of love or to do love we are in no way evolving we're contracting right we're breaking down we're going in and we're contracting and our, our vessel for our soul or our spirit has nowhere to go. It gets contracted and it finds it difficult to do anything more. So uh, one of the things which I, I, you know, I've been thinking about this week, particularly about evolution, is the idea that most of our teachers, most of our greatest teachers that have had the biggest impact on the major religions in the world were all people that advocated the path of love, peace, and compassion. And why is that? Well, because when we're doing love, when we're advocating love, when we are compassionate and kind, we can only grow. And from a neuroscientific perspective, Thinking, when we are in higher order thinking and have a greater ability to inhibit, we, we inhibit our saboteurs, our inner critic, that part of us that makes us, you know, anxious and fearful and, and makes us do things we don't want to do. And it allows us to be a clearer thinker, to see the wood from the trees, to be kinder and therefore less to to intolerant, bigoted, uncruel, unkind. You know, you get the picture. And so doing love really is the key to evolution. 
but <laughs> but humans are very good at misconstruing things. We're very good at misconstruing what love is. And in a way, we don't feel love when we're doing love. In actual fact, you know, many mothers give love endlessly, endlessly. And they, you know, what often happens, it comes from a place of not deserving. Daughters are taught culturally to be kind, to take care of, to uh, do stuff that in a way that kind of allows a lot of boys to get away with things. And that's, yeah, purely cultural, but there is these kinds of subtexts that we have that mean that we don't love and can't love in the way that is open and expansive. There's always something else that's going on. But also we know that there is boys will be boys. And in general, if we look at the faults of a mother and looks at the faults of a, of, a, of a father, in general, even if we're a daughter, we will see the faults of our mother worse then we'll see the faults of a father because we've given some idea that a mother has to be sacrosanct. And a father, well, a father can do what a father does. And it often is accepted. It's often accepted, but it is the lie. It is the lie. Yeah. So this is the double standard that we have, but I I also put an article this week um, about Tara Brack, where she talked about spiritual, spiritual toxicity and how spiritual toxicity happens in people that are doing meditation, that are doing, you know, all sorts of very spiritual stuff. And yet, and yet, they're anything but nice and kind. They stand in the place of being the law and the order. And they expect people to follow and not have a mind of their own. So this is part and parcel of what we need to think about when we think about evolution. What does doing love mean? And I really would love to know, and I wish I could see your comments right now, but I really just can't seem to see them. Oh, it just says efforts watching. Okay. All right. Hi, Everett. So, yeah, this is really where we are. So, I thought it might be a good idea um, to just to talk a little bit about that spiritual toxicity and a little bit about what's really evolving for me. And this morning, I was just really paying attention and I was thinking, well, last night before I went to bed, actually, I was thinking about. Jesus, I was thinking about the Buddha, I was thinking about different religious people, but I particularly was thinking about Jesus because I happen to have grown up Christian. And I was just really thinking that I, you know, I've had times where I've done a kind of energy uh, prayer called the whole Parapana, and I've actually had a visitation from Jesus. And in this case, he was holding a heart and he was smiling and said, that's the right way to go. And Although I do the Ho'oponopono a lot, and I do believe that it's a really good um, technique, it's a methodology, but there's something really key in what I was getting in, in other form, and that was more about understanding how did this person that was born be able to walk and talk in a way that was in alignment with God and understood the real truth that it was just really a relationship between him and God and nobody else really. And that actually we are all of the same and what it is that came up. And I got this, um, a story from the Bible came up and I don't know whether many of you know the story, but the story was that Jesus was teaching and um, some servants asked him to come and, and, and come because his, his, his cousin Lazarus had died and he was going and, 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 and Jesus said, yes, I'll, I'll go when I'm finished with this teaching, I will go. And when he went, when he was finished, he went and on the way back, the servant came back and said, no, he's dead, it's pointless coming. And that was really interesting because Jesus still went and he asked 
And uh, he spoke to Lazarus and told Lazarus to arise. And I was then thinking about this from a, a, a different perspective, a deeper perspective. And I started thinking, well, in the Bible, you know, the Old Testament was done in metaphor. And the way we were in that Old Testament 6,000 years ago, life was very different to the time when Jesus existed. Yeah, when Jesus came about, so 4,000 years plus or minus. And so the people hadn't got the same kind of understanding. They still hadn't got science in the way that they had, that we have now. And there was science, but it wasn't with the same kind of way we could explain things. We didn't have the tests. We didn't have the research. We didn't have those kinds of things. So we couldn't validate a lot of what was going on. And what really jumped up for me today was this key that it that was a metaphor of Lazarus. And what it was, was we need to awaken that part of us that is dead, the part of us that we shut down, the part of us that is connected to the spirit, the source, the God, the goddess, the all that is. We have to awaken. And that was what Christ was doing. It wasn't about Lazarus, the human being. In fact, it probably was a story, but it is about awakening. When we begin to awaken, we awaken Lazarus. We awaken the part that was dead, that is now to come alive. It is a rebirth. And when it's a rebirth, it's about really understanding what the truth is the real truth. And this is where we evolve. When we go back to the story and we look at the story in a whole new way, and that story has a different truth for us, then we have awakened. And then the job is, how do we stop those saboteurs getting in the way that we keep on track to the truth, that we keep on track to the truth? And this is, so I guess my story was yesterday when I was in bed, I was thinking, how can I walk and talk like Christ? How can I be, how can I be and walk in that same way? Because in the Bible, when we look, we are all the same. We are all brothers and sisters in God, right? We are God's child. So therefore, if that is in us, then we must be able to affect our life like that and how do we do that with our mind with our mind but of course the mind is often fooled because it's not tampered by truth and the feeling of the heart very often and this is what happens is that in a lot of religions that have come out it's because most of it is ruled by men and it's not anything against men it's just that what happens is there's been a misconstruction on the truth. And we've lost sight of the fact that the truth is we are the co-creator of our life. So I was really just focusing on that truth before I went to bed, which was, oh, my goodness. I really want to be able to walk and talk like that. How do I do that? How do I do that? What do I need to know? And then this realization kicked in this morning so this is part of evolution this is part of growing and part of learning and then I had two really interesting times this week well one was when I was with a group and we were talking and discussing about how how we get caught in our saboteur and how do we react when we notice that we're in our saboteur, our critical mind? And how do we do love in that moment? How do we do love in that moment? How do we evolve and expand and make a different choice? Because when we are doing something unconditionally, in when I say unconditionally, I'm just going to say, it's not unconditionally, you are conditional. So when you're doing stuff out of consciousness, out of awareness, that's was what I was trying to get to, not unconditionally, out of consciousness, out of awareness, you're in a pattern, yeah? 
And while you're doing anxiety, while you're doing eating, overeating, while you're doing uh, let's hide away from coming out and talking, any of these kinds of things, we are in our pattern and we have to stop that pattern. We have to find a way to interrupt it and to get to the, to the core. And my one was about my partner and recognizing that um, I had a piece of, basically I'd had lunch, came back from lunch and I had, uh, I, I ended up having a piece of this pizza because he had said to me, oh, you'd really like this. This was really crunchy. This was really gorgeous. And guess what? I had it. And I then realized, oh my God, I had something I didn't want to have. Now, what made me do that? What made me decide? And I immediately asked the question, and guess what? I saw this lovely, enticing face pick up on my left-hand side. Often our left is our emotional side, our feminine side. And it was a feminine voice. And so I said, my bad, my bad, my bad. And then there was another part that said, well, you know, he's going to be hurt if you don't have it. And if you really loved him, you'd have that little piece. So I had the pleaser, some part of me that wants to please, and then it used the enticer, which is kind of the dictive. Yes, you can have it. You know that nice voice? It's going to go with it. And I had that. And then I had, so I was really looking with curiosity at how that happened and what could I do next time? What could I, what was the deeper truth here? And the deeper truth was that he wouldn't leave me. He wouldn't stop loving me because I hadn't had the pizza. <laughs> that was the truth of the matter. The, the real truth was that I had co-created in some way to make that event happen. And I hadn't seen what I was doing. And I only did it after the fact. But it was important that I knew. And then I had... I was talking with someone who also had had this event where she had gone to a, her brother's event um, and, you know, her child has died, died a year ago. So she does a lot of work on grief. And basically she said, but I, I, I was going in the car kicking and screaming. There was every part of me that didn't want to go, but I was going to this event. I cried in the event and I was sitting in the event waiting, waiting for each song on a countdown. Why didn't she just go? And she, we started to look and unpick what it was. And it was really interesting to see the family patterns that as a family, we go together to support each other. And so therefore, if I don't go, I'm not supporting my brother. Even though he had told her that it was perfectly okay. He understood. And he wouldn't stop loving her. And he wouldn't feel as though she hadn't cared about him. And she could have had a lot of choice points along the way to stop. But she didn't. So we started really looking and exploring as we do with colleagues. And we started looking at how the saboteur kept kicking in and how do we become a co-creator in the new story we want to create? What's the new story? This is evolution. This is what I believe evolution is. When we stop, we look and we say, ah, I can see why I did that. I can see what was the reason. I can see where it came from. Oh, wow. So that doesn't mean that anymore. That means this. All oh, right. So next time, next time, that is the pathway to evolution. It's not about beating yourself up. It's not about hurting anybody else. It's about doing love in that moment. How do you do love in a moment? Sometimes you have to set a boundary. Sometimes you might hurt someone with things that you say, but if you say it in consciousness, if you say it with an intention that is totally clear of an agenda, then that's evolution. That's when you do love, because by not saying something, you do much more damage. Yeah. So these were just two of the things that I experienced today. And when we do things from that place of that higher order thinking, what happens is that our heart and our mind, mind and our heart, <laughs> they come together and they start to beat like a pulsar, like a pulsar. And a pulsar has a huge, huge effect in the whole of the universe 
our heart, if you don't know this already, beats like an atrium ventricle, atrium ventricle. It is like another pulsar in our body. So when we bring consciousness down, we're coming into our body and we're choosing from another way. We're choosing to do the path of love. And that's when we build. It becomes like a great big drum and it resonates throughout the universe. It resonates bigger than we think. And it has an effect because we always affect each other. Even just me talking to you now, I will affect you. And I'm not even touching you. So we know, we know that the sounds of our voices, just the act of hearing it, creates that resonance that will help you. So, yeah. I think that's about all that I can really talk about evolution. I can go on forever and ever and ever on in, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to stop now. Um, I would love to hear what's come up for you, if anything has. Um, Afraid if there's something you've written and I can't see it and I can't work out why it hasn't, nothing's come up. Uh, I think it's Shelley is also here. If you don't mind, uh, you can put it in a WhatsApp or you can put it in Messenger and I can try and see whether I can get it. Or you can come online and click on the Zoom link, which is in the comments and come on. I'll give you a moment. And uh, yeah, so just think about the idea of perhaps what would it be like if you walked and talked love? What would it be like if you were able to stop enough to be able to share love. Ah, Shelley's here. She's in the waiting room. Okay, let's let's come on. Hi, Shelley. Hi. Um, I think I'm here. Let's see. Start video. I can see you. Hello, hello, hello. I know we're going to meet later. <laughs> I can see you. Hello, hello, hello. I know we're going to meet later. <laughs> I've got a double. I oh, was it you? <laughs> I've got a. Um, I've got reverb. Maybe I just turned it off. Okay, am yeah, I still you might there? Have turned up the one or the other. Yeah, because you might be on the Zoom now and not on the Facebook. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but you're on Facebook. I could repeat hear it repeating us, so I couldn't follow. Yeah. yeah. So, did something come up for you that you want to share, or? Um, so much. I've had such. A <laughs> well, share, share along. Let me know what came up for you. Uh, well, so I much because, like, your article with the Tara Brock stuff. Um, I love Tara Brock. So yeah. I listened recent video that she just did on the 15th and um this morning and it was just really good right with all the stuff that you're um talking about and that i'm starting to learn and in the program with you is like this week was yeah 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 so <laughs> yeah so what so what's <laughs> it's all well, it's all there to bring it all in and find the parts that fit <laughs> So what was it that that I mean obviously something brought you on to 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 say something. So what was there what 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 was it that came on for you that you wanted to share? Um I'm not sure. Ask <laughs> me <laughs> the question again and let me see if it comes. I don't want to feel I don't want to feed it. Ask what's the question again? Okay, so I, I I just asked the question about um, about I mean certainly it was what I had said, which was about doing love, and how might you do love in your everyday today, um, and if there was anything about I know that you've talked about Tara Brack, but I'd be curious about what it was that resonated with the toxic um, spiritualism, which is what she was talking about. And I know that you, and I, if it's okay, but I know that 
you've had that's partly been very much part of your life <laughs> that toxic spiritualism yeah that it triggered a lot to read the article and then to hear her speak this morning when she, i think it was when she did on the 15th she talked all about um like remaining calm in those moments and how differently you would respond and it's along the exact same line of of what you're working with um and the love thing is that's how you'd behave with the love i believe is that just authentic calmness yeah um yeah. and it would you know and you could catch those moments that that mean everything <laughs> yeah and I, and I think what's really key, and I think it's the, 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 the whole part of this, and I think it's lovely that it's great that you listen to Tara Brack. Um, I think when, we, when we're moving into that higher order thinking, that's in a different way, it's, it's completely different from looking in the space that we're trying to be right, or we're trying to be uh, for, force anybody. I think anything that creates a force on somebody else to do something which goes against themselves, then really is quite a challenging kind of situation. So, but, but right thinking in that higher order thinking is really understanding that it is about love. That's the core principle. And if your heart isn't, isn't, isn't resonating, that's your guideline. If your heart is not beating at, at, a, at like that pulsar, you know, if you think about a pulsar with regularity, with, with, with power, with um, the ability to expand it, I think if you don't have that feeling in you, then you know you're wrong. And we need to have this idea of knowing that we're wrong because of that. You know, we need to go, ah, I'm feeling this, I need to do a check here. Something about me is telling me this isn't okay. Well, and it's so much like you say about the physiology, like catching that first rigid feeling of losing your calmness to yeah. know that I'm longer aligned with my heart, something else is coming in. Yeah. And what being brave enough to face that was a lot of what she was talking about too, was brave enough to kind of face those wolves and say, why are you here? And how can I make you happy? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And what was really nice is, is that the idea was her happiness didn't depend on anybody else's happiness, but mm. she wanted them and could see that part of their happiness had to be co-created by them. So she wasn't abdicating that they take away responsibility for their happiness, that, that she was working on a way that they could deal with finding the, where the co-creation within that happiness is. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the hardest things, one of the hardest things um, was I, I remember saying something to someone, it was a long time ago, and I probably didn't have the words that are the same as what I had now. And this, and this was a friend that was having trouble with everyone in my neighborhood. Wow. And I said to them, it's really interesting. How come you're the only one that's having trouble? You know, if we really look at the common denominator, maybe it's you. <laughs> and of course, I, it probably wasn't the right time to say it. But I also realized it was probably the right thing to say, but it could have been done a little gentler, maybe. But it was really the truth. The truth is we don't look at our part in the deal. Right. And where are we not being loving? Where are we abdicating our care, our, our love? Um, in reality, it usually does come down to self. And sometimes people need to hear it jarringly. You know, yeah. so it got to the point where it's the entire neighborhood and your entire life, then everybody's being far too gentle with you. <laughs> yeah and then it's you how you're looking at the world and being in the world yes yeah somebody come in with that jarring oh whoops but hey that's what I would have said calmly too so yeah exactly exactly I just want to say hello to Juliet who's come on and said seasonal greetings and happy festival celebrations hello Juliet nice to see you so something has worked over there <laughs> so I don't know why that didn't work anyway no problem. Did I leave the, or do you want me to stay here? Or? No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, no, we, can, we you can leave if you want to leave. And thank you for coming on. It's really lovely to see you. And um, I know that we're going to be chatting in, in probably in another half an hour's time. Moment. So that'd be good. Thank you for coming on.
thank you for coming up. We'll see you in a bit. And thank you for sharing about Tara again, because I think that I think that's a a really valuable. And maybe if you can, I mean, if you've got, do you have a link for that that talk? The YouTube one. I'll try to put it there. It's the newest one that she just did. I think it was December fifteenth. Okay, um, well, that would be great if you can put it into the if you can put it into the chat. That would be really nice. Then then I know Effort is here. She will want to to listen to it. So that would be great. Okay, then, and I'll see you in a bit. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Good. All right. So I think we're going to end now. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for, for coming on. And I know that Juliet came on, so it was really nice that she did. And wishing us season's greetings. Uh, and uh, yeah, and if there's anything that you want to ask, please leave message down here and I can reply to you uh, and, and at the same time if you feel that and I know that the two, you two that are here are already doing <laughs> coming and seeing me um, but for anybody else that um, would like to find out more how you can walk the sovereign way how you can do love on a continuous basis how you can use mental fitness as a way to down-regulate and up-regulate the wise sovereign. So be able to decrease the effect of your saboteurs, which are going to be there all the time, and be able to move into that place of peace and joy. Um, give me a call. I've got, uh, I'll leave a link in the, in the chat and you can let me know how it goes and we can have a good chat, all right? And how I can help. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, this doesn't want to stop. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.